when we have two historical examples here, one of just planning attacks against your own civilian population to justify starting a war, as in Operation Northwoods, and another example of actually using a false flag attack to start the Vietnam War, which killed and maimed literally hundreds of thousands of people, you have zero moral authority to talk critically of false flag attacks. So apparently, according to the American government and Western mainstream corporate media, the Russians are currently in the process of planning and carrying out a false flag attack. Now, this is particularly interesting because at any point prior to these claims being made officially by the American government and Western mainstream media, any talk of a potential false flag attack was always coloured with that must be coming from a conspiracy theorist. This cannot be true. False flag attacks simply do not happen. In fact, that was so much so that I went ahead and brought some of my tin foil ready to go if we need to make a tin foil hat by the end of this video. Although I'm pretty sure that when we do get to the end of this clip, I would have shown all of you watching that this is more of a case of the pot calling the kettle black. I'm Stuart Hooper, a lecturer in political science and PhD researcher, approaching problems like this one, not from a position of left versus right, but right versus wrong. And I have been intensely interested in this idea of false flag attacks for years and years and years, and now spent a good portion of my time researching and reading about this phenomenon and trying to understand it in a really comprehensive fashion. And I'm kind of just sitting here now in, like I said, somewhat of a state of shock because every time you would ever mention the possibility of something being a false flag attack in international politics, coming from anywhere, from anyone, well, this was not only just an off-limits discussion, something that you weren't even allowed to talk about, the possibility of this being real, but this was actually the realm of fantasy, that this was the realm of conspiracy theory, and this was the central claim of the American government and Western mainstream corporate media. I'm here to tell you that that has never been the case. These things have always been a very real phenomenon, and we need to explore exactly what they are, how they work, and give some historical examples of where we have the United States absolutely participating in false flag events. This really is the pot calling the kettle black. And like I said, by the time we get to the end of this clip, um, we're certainly not going to need the tin foil. We're going to perhaps need uh, somewhat of a stiff drink because this is going to be somewhat of a reality shock for some of you out there, I'm sure. So what exactly is a false flag event? Well, this is an act which you would commit which is trying to disguise the actual source of responsibility and pin the blame onto another party, onto another actor um, within the situation. So let's say we want to start a war as a country and we really want to go and attack country X. But if we do that, we're going to be seen in the eyes of the world as an aggressor. And that's obviously the biggest no-no. Lots of historical examples of aggressors being painted in, in, in an extremely negative light in world history. So how do you start a war and justify it? Well, you could paint up uh, a ship as a so-called enemy ship. You could have it then shoot at one of your own ships and then claim, well, look what's just happened. We've been attacked by Country X. Look, that's clearly one of their ships over there. It's clearly shooting at us. Um, surely, it's now time to go to war. We are now justified 
in our invasion. False flags are very real. Despite the claims of the Western mainstream media and the US government and the British government and the French government and the, and the like, that these are illusions, these things never happen and we're the good guys and only the bad guys would ever carry out a false flag attack. Well, let's go ahead and just look at a few small examples of the good guys carrying out false flag attacks, which we do have empirical historical evidence to back up our claims. We're not just spouting nonsense as potentially the State Department seems to be doing. So the first one that we'll look at here, Operation North Woods. I'm sure some of you out there have heard of this one before. This was a plan that was created by the Joint Chiefs of Staff in the early 1960s with the subject line, as we can see here in this unclassified document, Justification for U.S. military intervention in Cuba. The Joint Chiefs of Staff have considered the attached memorandum for the Chief of Operations, Cuba Project, which responds to a request of that office for a brief but precise description of pretexts which would provide justification for U.S. military intervention in Cuba. How precisely would they create these pretexts for war with Cuba? Well, they wanted to use the CIA to stage and actually carry out terrorist attacks on the American military and civilians, and then turn around and say, Cuba did this. This is a black and white example of an attempted false flag attack. Now this one not actually carried out because it got to Kennedy's desk and Kennedy rejected it, interestingly enough. Let's shift forward a couple of years to the Gulf of Tonkin incident in 1964. Here the North Vietnamese Navy is alleged to be attacking the strongest navy on the face of the planet. And the attack came at a very convenient moment for the United States because they allowed operational plans that had been created to invade and destroy Vietnam to be approved by Congress and take the United States to war. So in this first attack, there are actually no injuries to Americans whatsoever, let alone deaths. Nobody died in this. And then supposedly, there's a second attack. And it's this second attack which is used to justify the beginning of the war in Vietnam. Now, what precisely happened with this second attack? Nothing. There was not a second attack that occurred. So what did actually happen here? Well, the NSA, the National Security Agency, forwarded 15 pieces of incorrect intelligence, which said an attack had taken place, a second attack had taken place. But the NSA withheld 107 pieces of intelligence, which correctly stated that there had been no second attack. The CIA and the NSA in this case were deliberately withholding this information in an attempt to start a war in an attempt to create a pretext for military action in Vietnam. This is a false flag event. So is Russia planning to use a false flag attack in Ukraine? I have no idea. If they did, I would absolutely be against it and call it out and look for as much evidence as I possibly could to support that position. However, do I want to hear from the United States or Britain about how immoral the use of a false flag operation is? Absolutely not. When we have 
two historical examples here. One of just planning attacks against your own civilian population to justify starting a war, as in Operation Northwoods. And another example of actually using a false flag attack to start the Vietnam War, which killed and maimed literally hundreds of thousands of people, you have zero moral authority to talk critically of false flag attacks. Thank you guys for making it to the end of this clip. Please subscribe if you want more passionate commentary from myself on all sorts of issues just like this, primarily revolving around foreign policy and elites. And these sorts of events which we have to be intensely critical of to really understand the world. Please come and join me here on this channel. Subscribe, hit the notification bell and leave me your comments below. I love to hear from you all in the comments. I love to talk back and forth with my viewers and I really want to try and grow something here. Um, a voice that is not coming from the left, not coming from the right. We've had a huge upsurge in YouTubers on the left or on the right. Not too many that are trying to create a more bipartisan position, something that looks critically of both sides. And when it comes to foreign policy and these sorts of false flag events, um, that division means absolutely nothing. The Democrats and the Republicans, they are absolutely on the same side when it comes to war and peace especially the war side of things. So as I said at the start of the clip, we don't need this to talk about false flags. We have plenty of historical evidence that these things are real, and we really have to do everything we can to expose the fact that they are real, that they do exist, and we have to think as critically as possible about events in the real world to avoid being sucked into conflicts on the basis of lies.